Hello, this is a case of a six foot four inch gentleman, a 65 year old, uh, with permanent atrial fibrillation and a prior LV lead implant failure due to inability to advance any uh, device company sheath into a stable uh, position in his coronary sinus. Uh, without the options provided by the Worley Merit LV lead implant system, patient was headed to the OR for an epicardial lead. We started with a standard Worley CSG, which did not advance easily into the CS uh, over the braided core. We tried the usual routine, which was to take a vertebral vein selector and advance that over a glide wire to create a rail over which a sheath could be advanced and, necess and if necessary, serve as a conduit to exchange the glide wire for a more supportive wire i.e. an Amplatz wire. When the sheath did not advance easily over the glide wire supported by the vertebral vein selector, we switched to the Cook Amplatz wire and still uh, the sheath did not advance easily. So it became apparent in retrospect that given the size of the patient and permanent atrial fibrillation, we really should have started uh, with a jumbo CSG. As you see here, the, the jumbo CSG has essentially the same shape uh, as a standard CSG, but it has a wider curve and also is longer. Uh, I find that the jumbo is necessary in only 5 to 10 percent of cases. So we uh, removed the system retaining the Amplatz wire and then uh, were able to advance uh, the CSG jumbo uh, into a stable position in the coronary sinus. It's important to note that there is a long CSG, which is also 50 centimeters, but the shape is not the same as the jumbo, and it's not a sheath that I ever use. And I don't think it would have helped in this situation because it was really the shape of the sheath that was important in, in establishing a stable lead position. So with the options provided by the Merritt Worley LV lead implant system, and in this case, the jumbo sheath, there's no need to send the patient to the OR uh, for an epicardial lead. Thank you for your interest.